Earl Bakken, born and raised in Minnesota, a boy with a fascination for electricity, a man with a dream to save lives, the co-founder of Medtronic, one of the world's leading medical technology companies, inventor of the portable pacemaker, a man whose motto, ready, fire, aim, made implantable medical devices a reality. Earl Elmer Bakken was born on January 10, 1924, in Minneapolis, Minnesota. At an early age, Bakken was already fascinated with electricity. He would experiment with batteries, bells, and buzzers, which led him to making robots and radios. Bakken's thoughts about how he could use electricity changed dramatically when he saw the movie Frankenstein at his local neighborhood theater when he was eight years old. Little did he know his fascination with human life and electricity would inspire his actions and become his legacy. In 1941, Bakken graduated from Columbia Heights High School and enlisted in the Army Signal Corps. At the end of World War II, he returned to Minneapolis and enrolled at the University of Minnesota. During his spare time, Bakken found himself picking up odd jobs of repairing malfunctioning equipment at area hospitals. This work led to a conversation between Earl and his brother-in-law, Palmer Hermansley. It was then that they realized that there was a need for a business that repaired medical equipment. On April 29, 1949, Earl Bakken and Palmer Hermansley began a partnership servicing electrical medical equipment. They named their company Medtronic, a combination of the words medical and electronic, which they thought was a straightforward representation of their business. Their first shop was located in a garage on 19th Avenue Northeast in Minneapolis. Looking back, Bakken didn't think that either one of them saw the business as a long-term prospect, much less a lifelong career. We just wanted to make enough living to buy some food and keep our family going. That was our dream at the beginning, but it went way beyond, way beyond that. Bakken's dream changed significantly during this time when he became acquainted with Dr. C. Walton Lillehei, a pioneer in open-heart surgery at the University of Minnesota Medical School. Lillehei was using the latest technology for artificially pacing the heart. Pacing technology began at the turn of the century with the invention of the electrocardiograph. This led to the development of the first artificial pacing of the human heart in the 1920s. It wasn't until the early 1950s when war-related research inspired doctors to develop more dependable devices for pacing the heart. These pacemakers were large, bulky boxes utilizing vacuum tube technology that doctors wheeled around on carts to the patient's rooms and had to be plugged into a wall for power. If there was a power outage, the machines were useless. Little High operated on infants who relied on pacemakers during recovery. On October 31, 1957, a three-hour power failure hit the Twin Cities, causing the tragic death of a child. This experience was a reminder of the limitations of existing technology. Lillehei turned to Bakken to see what Medtronic could do to solve this problem. The design Bakken created for the new pacemaker was based on the circuit for an electronic metronome. He read about this circuit in Popular Electronics magazine. Instead of transmitting clicks to a loudspeaker as the metronome would, he used it to create a pacemaker that transmitted electric pulses to the heart to keep a steady heartbeat. The size of Bakken's prototype was much smaller because it used transistors instead of vacuum tubes. It was more reliable and portable because it used batteries instead of power from a wall outlet. It was only four weeks after Lillehei asked Bakken for his help with the pacemaker that Bakken created a prototype which was successfully tested on a dog. 
The day following this test, Bakken was shocked to see his prototype being used on a child. When I came to the university and they were using the uh, pacemaker that I had made up as a temporary pacemaker to test on dogs, and they had attached it to a child. And it was uh, an emotional thing for me to see something we had made with our own hands keeping this child alive. And yet the question came to mind, did we put enough quality in it to be used uh, on a child? Because we had made that first one only as a prototype. And, uh, you know, that was quite a feeling, but it was such a wonderful feeling to know that here was a child that was alive because we had made something that was keeping them alive. The creation of Uro Bakken's portable battery-operated pacemaker impacted doctors and engineers all over the world and led to the development of the first implantable pacemaker. Today, more than 50 years later, the actions of Uro Bakken and Medtronic's state-of-the-art implantable pacemakers continue to restore life to patients around the world. Well, I've always been a fairly healthy person and been able to do just about everything I wanted to do. Um, over the years with, the, with my aging and with uh, the onset of the electrical stimulus failure on one side of my heart, uh, normally I would have cut down on my activities and been more sedentary. The pacemaker and later the uh, defibrillator pacer uh, has helped me to return to that normal, more normal lifestyle. I'm able to play golf, I, I do my own lawn work um, and, and housework, um, I'm able to be active in, uh, in walking and uh, so I feel that without the, the pacemaker defibrillator I might be dead now. Linda Sheppy is a registered nurse at the Minnesota Heart Clinic in Edina. But one of the big things that patients will tell me is just that the size of the devices have, have gone down. ICDs are probably even more, um, more of a change in the size, but even the pacemaker, you can see that um, about probably two generations ago, um, pacemakers were about this size. And now this is one of their newest generations gone down to this size. So comfort for the patients and just cosmetically, um, there's not as big of a um, difference for them, especially our younger patients. Dr. Kwan Pham, a cardiac electrophysiologist, uses the pacemaker to help restore a regular heart rhythm in his patients. Bill Bakken is a Minnesota own native and uh, he's invent this pacemaker in the 1950s and have in, had tremendous and mega impact on patients' lives ever since then. And we have him to thank for and the people that follow him. Uh, uh, you know, people, nowadays people live longer, not just longer, but also healthier, and thanks to inventions like a pacemaker. Earl Bakken is retired and has been living in Hawaii since 1991, where he lives by his motto, Ready, Fire, Aim. It's again what most people get stuck with, it is ready, aim, fire, except it gets to be ready, aim, 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 so you've got to do something and make it happen and fire. The lesson, as described by Mr. Bakken, is have a bias for action. Use your intuition. Think out of the box. Don't overanalyze. Don't hesitate while looking for the perfect result. Do it. Correct your aim later. Earl Elmer Bakken, the individual in history. Ready, fire, aim. Every 4.8 seconds at some place in the world Somebody is being brought to a fuller life by what we make.